Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we continue talking about rocket science. It's kind of a nice and catchy term. Um, today we will talk about um, how this rocket calculations are related to gravity. Uh, so basically we are talking about a major component of space exploration, um, how the rocket should be um, calculated, how all these parameters, the fuel, speed, etc. Uh, if we are, let's say, leaving the Earth and are trying to launch um, the rocket on the orbit. Now before, when we were talking about ideal rocket um, equation, uh, we were talking about space without any kind of external uh, forces, external gravitation fields, for instance. Now we will introduce this component into the equation and we will see how it changes the equation. So that's the subject of this let uh, lecture. Now, uh, this lecture is part of the Physics 14th uh, course uh, of physics which is presented on unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. You just go through a directory. Uh, it, you go to physics, and then from physics to mechanics, and then dynamics, and uh, it will be part of the, uh, the last topic on the dynamics. Now, why? Because um, these lectures are not only on YouTube, because every lecture on the website um, has a very detailed notes, practically whatever I'm talking about is, is, is written. Uh, plus, the most important thing, I think, um, the website is logically structured, so all the lectures are follow each other in a logical sequence. Now, the prerequisite for this course is Mass for Teens on the same website, and um, you really have to be familiar with um, calculus and with vector algebra, so that's uh, that's prerequisite. So I will be uh, using relatively freely concepts of uh, derivative, differential, etc. These are all parts of these um, rocket calculations. Uh, and the site is free, by the way, completely free. There are no advertisement, no financial strings attached. Okay. Now, let me uh, start from something which we already started in the previous lectures. Uh, namely, um, the equation of uh, uh, how the speed of the rocket is changing. Uh, this is basically uh, V of T at the end minus V at time the beginning. So these are speeds of the rocket in the beginning when it starts moving or its engine actually starts working. It may be on the surface of the Earth, which means this will be zero. Or maybe it's somewhere in space when engine starts working. And this is at the end of the period during which we are um, measuring the speed as a result of working engine. So this is what we are going to um, investigate we did already uh, use this and receive this formula. Now this is effective speed of the exhaust. So when propellant is exhausted, let's say backwards, then th the rocket goes forward. Now we are always assuming that the rocket moves along the positive direction of uh, some axis, let's say x-axis, which means we are disregarding y and z coordinates and the propeller, propellant is exhausted towards the negative end of the X. So that's why this speed, if we interpret it as a vector, is actually negative. And minus this is positive. Times logarithm of mass of T in the beginning divided by mass T at the end. Now, the mass at the end of the period of acceleration is obviously less than the, the, than the mass in the beginning of this period. That's why this ratio is greater than 1, logarithm is positive, 
um, uh, effective uh, exhaustion speed is negative, but this is a minus, so it's also positive, and that's why we have this delta VFT positive, right? Now, this formula in many textbooks is not really um, uh, written with this minus sign, which means they actually consider VE as positive, and that's why basically this is the result. In, uh, written in this way, in a vector form, the formula is more, um, I think, flexible because sometimes we want to decelerate the rocket. For instance, rocket goes to some point and then it wants to decelerate, so it turns with its back towards its movement and then starts working, and the engine starts working, and obviously because we are exhausting towards positive direction of the movement, we are decelerating the rocket. And it's written here, actually, because if VE is positive towards the, the, the direction of the rocket, with minus it will be negative, and that's why the delta would be negative, which means we are reducing the speed, we are decelerating. So that's why I prefer to have this minus sign. But you should understand that it's not, not really that very important. Besides, in most cases, we are, we are considering when the rocket starts and accelerates. Um, they don't think about deceleration for whatever reason. Okay, now, now I would like to um, introduce the gravitation. Now, this is an equation in empty space. There is absolutely no gravitation fields, no drag from, from the air, air or, or anything like that, no resistance to the moving because the rocket moves in an empty space, basically. So, um, this is this equation. Now I'm introducing the gravitation. And I will do exactly the same, um, I will use exactly the same logic as I was using when I derived this particular equation. Right? So, my first um, tool which I'm using is the uh, conservation of momentum. So I will check what's the momentum of the rocket in the beginning of its movement and at the end of the movement. And they're supposed to be equal to each other. Except in this particular case, we, we have to consider that there is a force acting on the rocket, the force of gravity. Now, so we are assuming that the rocket starts from the surface of the Earth, and it starts usually with zero speed, but in any case, we will see that that's not really very important. Um, but what is important is that there is a force which is directed against the rocket movement and the force, if the rocket works, if the rocket engine um, works during certain amount of time, this force has some impulse and this impulse is supposed to be added to the entire momentum. Well, in this case it's subtracted because it's opposite to the movement. Now you remember uh, this formula. Right? This is the second law um, of, of Newton. Now, instead of A, we can have dV by dt, because what is acceleration A? It's the first derivative of the, uh, of the speed, right? Or dMv of dt. So that was the formula when the mass was actually constant and we just put it inside differential. But now if mass is not the constant, this is the correct uh, form of this equation, which means that F times dt equals d of mv. And F might be actually even the force which depends on the time too. Maybe, but it doesn't really matter. But anyway, this is the equation which, can, which equates uh, impulse of the force during the moment, uh, during the time, uh, infinitesimal time dt, and increment of the momentum uh, of the motion. So this force, if it's um, gravity force, should also be added at the end uh, of my uh, equation which combines my momentum before and momentum after. So before, 
force did not act, but during the time of my acceleration, my force was the um, gravity force, and it was actually acting, and we have to take into consideration additional momentum which it gives. Well, additional means it was a minus sign in this case, because it goes against the movement. But anyway, this is something which we have to take into consideration. Everything else is exactly as before. So, what was before? Now, before I had my momentum being this. Now, in most cases we can probably consider that at the time uh, of the start, t equals t begin. The, the rocket is on the launch pad on the Earth, and basically its speed is zero, and that's, uh, that means that my momentum is zero. Now, what happens if my, uh, my engines are working during the time dt? This is an infinitesimal time from t to t plus dt. This is interval of time which I am considering right now. So, in the beginning of this, it was m, m, uh, m, m of t times v of t. Mass is variable because we are exhausting propellant. V is variable because we are accelerating. But in the beginning of this time, I had certain mass and certain speed. Now, what happens during the time dt? Infinitesimal period of time. Well, we have exhausted certain um, amount of mass. Now, what kind of mass we have exhausted? Well, we have exhausted mass which was at the moment t minus mass at the moment t plus dt. That's what we have exhausted, right? Now, what is it actually? Well, this is minus differential of m of t. Why? Well, because differential of function is the value of this function at the moment t plus dt minus uh, value of the function at the moment t. So right now I would like my mass to be positive. So if I'm asking how much mass I have exhausted, it's supposed to be with a minus sign because differential is obviously negative in this case. This is smaller, this is bigger, this is after the exhaustion, this is before. So this is negative. So my differential is negative, and that's why the amount of mass which has been exhausted is supposed to be positive, and that's how I wrote it here. Now, this mass, which was exhausted, uh, was exhausted with, um, uh, uh, with certain speed, right? Now, what is the speed of exhaustion? Well, my effective speed is uh, VE. That's a speed of the um, propellant relative to the rocket. But rocket is also moving with the speed V of T, right? So we have to add basically the rocket speed with exhaust speed to get the uh, real speed of the propellant and this is the mass. So, my momentum of uh, exhaust, exhausted propellant is its mass times its speed. So, this is momentum of the propellant. This is its mass, positive mass, because it's minus and d is negative, 
And this is the speed with which we exhaust the propellant, the gases, whatever is burning. Now, the next component is the rocket itself. So, gases are going one way and they have this momentum. By the way, in the beginning, if V of T is equal to zero, my VE is negative, so the whole thing is negative. So, this is negative momentum, right, in the very beginning. When V of T is, is zero and my initial momentum, if we start from the moment zero, actually, when, it, when the rocket is in the launch pad, this is obviously zero. So, this is negative. But the rocket has a positive momentum because the rocket goes to the positive direction of the of the axis. So what's the uh, momentum of the of the rocket? Well, the rocket has a uh, mass m of t plus dt. That's its final mass, right? Which is equal to look at this m t of t t goes here. It's minus, it will be plus. D goes here. So instead of this, I can put m of t plus d m of t. That's, mass, that's the mass of the rocket. And what's the speed of the rocket? Well, speed of the rocket is v of t plus dt. But again, is absolutely the same uh, formula for differential. Instead of v at time of uh, v plus dt, I can put v of t plus differential of v of dt. Again, if you feel some kind of uncomfortable about this, go back to the calculus. It's all there. It's very, very simple thing. So this is the momentum of the rocket itself whatever remains of the rocket without the propellant which has been exhausted. So this is, let's say in the beginning, in the, when VFT is equal to zero, this is negative and this is positive and that's why their sum is equal to zero, right? But now, not quite. Now we have to really overcome an impulse of the, um, of the force of gravity, which is equal to What is the force of gravity? Well, the force of gravity is m of t times g, right? Mass times acceleration of the free fall. And I have to multiply it by the time during which this force was acting, right? So that's what basically the whole thing is. Now, if I will combine these three components together, I will basically have to exact. I have to get exactly the same thing as my initial uh, momentum, because this is the sen in in a sense. This is what actually the conservation of momentum is. This is momentum in the beginning of this period. Uh, from t to t plus, from t to t plus dt, this is the beginning momentum, and the combination of, of, of these three is the ending momentum, and the conservation of momentum says that they must be the same, right? So, let's make this equation. Okay, so what is really the equation? First, I have to have this component minus d m of t times v of t plus v e. That's one component, right? Now, second component is this one. This is the momentum of the rocket.
new mass times new speed. And I have to add the impulse from the gravity. Force, mass times acceleration, times time. So during the time dt, infinitesimal uh, interval of time from some point t to some point t plus dt. So during this interval of time dt, this was in the beginning of this period, this was at the end of this period. And basically that's it. So the only thing which I have added is this one, this component, relative to uh, flying the rocket um, in a free space without any kind of uh, forces. So let's just simplify that a little bit. Um, now what follows is this. If I will open these parentheses, what will I have? I will have mt times vt. I will have vt times d of mt. I will have mt times dvt. And I will have differential times differential and I will completely throw it away because this is an infinitesimal of higher order because I will, I will be doing integration obviously uh, after that and this is infinitesimal of the higher order and one integration will give me infinitesimal which can be um, uh, dropped uh, at, at the limit so instead of this I can just put this and I wipe out this one And now I can basically do the following. I can do this and, oops, sorry, not this. This stays. And this. Right? Then I can do this minus dm of tvt and plus dm of tvt. So I can do this and this. So what remains what remains is the following. I will have this one, I will have this one, and I can and I have this one without this. So the final equation looks like zero, this is zero, equals minus VE times DM of T plus M of T DV and plus this. So this is my final equation, which I can integrate right now to get the formula for total increment of my speed from, uh, from t begin to t end on this time interval. So um, what will I do? I will obviously divide by mt and I will have uh, this goes to the plus VE dm of t divided by m of t equals um, uh, 
no, I will put this also to the left minus g minus g times dt equals to d v of t so this goes to the left this goes to the left this is the only thing which remains on the right and I divide everything by m of t by, by m of t by m of t here, here and divide it here so let me reformulate it a little bit more d v of t is equal to now what is this? this is obviously a differential of logarithm, right? so the first derivative of logarithm of something is 1 over that something that's m of t and then you have to multiply it by derivative of the inner function which is uh, m derivative of t and that's what gives you differential and uh, minus g dt now I can integrate it very simply integrate from t begin to t end t begin t end t begin t end so what will be my result? well if I'm integrating differential of some function the result will be function right so it will be v of t uh, v of t end minus v of t begin this is exactly delta v which we are interested in how much speed we will gain right equals 2 now this is the constant so it goes outside and then I will have again the function logarithm of m of t end minus logarithm of m of t begin and minus integral of this is obviously g times t end minus t begin okay fine that's done let me just simplify it maybe a little bit and that would be the, the answer so delta v is equal to now the difference uh, between logarithm is logarithm of their uh, ratio right now ratio t end divided by mass of t end divided by mass at t begin um, well the problem is mass of uh, t end divided by mass of t begin well t end is smaller uh, mass at t end at the end of the period is smaller than mass in the beginning right because we are exhausting the propeller which means that my ratio is less than one when the ratio is less than one logarithm is negative right and I don't like to have to deal with negative logarithm so I will inverse it and I will put here beginning and this is end and put minus sign in front of it right so as a result I will have minus VE logarithm of mass at t begin divided by mass of t end and minus g t end minus t begin so that's my final formula which is almost the same as my ideal rapid equation except this this member so this is the only thing which my gravitation added to the equation 
my old equation was from here to here and now it's this way now it's kind of obvious that this is supposed to be this way why well because as the rocket comes up it also falls down because of the gravity now the gravity has acceleration g and the interval of time during which the rocket goes down and at the same time falls down uh, is from t end to t begin and that's why you have this minus g times the difference in time so we could have come up with this without all these calculations but i just wanted to make again the point that we're talking about conservation of momentum and that the gravitation force has an impulse which is supposed to be taken into equation and that's basically why we have the same thing uh, plus this particular member which is kind of obvious now um what's what's important actually here well important is that um ve is again ve is negative when we when when the rocket starts right because it's going against the direction of the rocket which we assume to be positive so let's say this is a z-axis and the rocket goes up um, along the z-axis uh, and obviously its speed uh, mm, uh, vector of speed its uh, velocity is positive and this one should be negative then with minus sign it will be positive and unless by absolute value this thing exceeds this one the rocket will not fly it will just stay still on the launching pad so you have to have a pretty substantial um, effective exhaust by absolute value to overcome this obviously now um, what else is important here um, what is important is that um, there are complications you see you might think about this way okay we have taken into consideration the the gravity and that's probably the biggest factor which influence all our cal calculations and must be taken into account now what has not been taken into account in these calculations well number one when the rocket starts from the surface of the earth there is an air resistance which drags it down right so that's we did not take it into consideration at all and the air resistance obviously depends on the rocket form or shape itself but also on the density of the air and density of the air is changing the higher we go the less dense the air is so we have to really take it into consideration which is not easy another thing which we did not take into consideration is that the gravity as we are moving uh, off the earth higher and higher the gravity itself is also changing because we are increasing our distance from the planet so g is not actually uh, constant in the real life situation which kind of complicates obviously uh, our equation I mean we have integrated equation basically right now if we will take into account all these factors the equation differential equation from which we started which is what's happening during the time dt um, this differential equation would be a little bit more complicated and uh, sufficiently complica uh, complicated not to be able to solve it in integrals so we will not be able to come up with a formula like this one uh, instead people basically do it numerically and uh, taking into consideration all these factors actually does complicate the whole uh, picture sufficiently to call rocket science in quotes as something which is really very very complicated yes you definitely can say so there are many different factors another factor which uh, I would like to mention is if you launch the rocket towards the east the earth's rotation actually helped to start from certain speed which is not really zero so 
the speed in the very beginning, v of t begin, is not really zero. It's actually the speed of the rotation of the Earth if you point it to the east. Now, if it's at some angle, maybe that's, that's another story again. I mean, you have to really take into consideration lots of factors. Okay. Now, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It's uh, in this website, unisor.com. Um, and uh, just try to familiarize yourself. And uh, basically, that's it. That probably um, completes my theoretical um, explanation of what rocket science is about. Again, not covering completely all the complexity, but giving you some flavor of um, basically, this is the probably the most important part of it, because all these additional things, like the fact that the gravity is changing uh, as we are going up, uh, or the density of the air, etc., they are definitely contributing factors, which the real calculations performed for launching the rockets must be taken. However, for our purposes, this is the major component, because whatever we are adding is significantly smaller in magnitude and impact on the, on the movement of the racket. But still, you know, important and we have to take it into consideration when, when, when we are dealing with real rockets to, to launch. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>